Hey everybody, let me show you how I've built this uh, Starfighter design using the Model Shop Creeples kit from uh, Big, Medium, Small. A kit that I made in collaboration with the entire team there. Uh, lots of fun, lots of hard work. Uh, what a pleasure to see everything come together uh, in the end. We released it recently and uh, it's been super exciting to see what people have, uh, have built with it. A uh, really cool pack containing uh, ship parts, Creeple parts and customizable characters. Let's jump into it. So here we are in Blender. And you can see the kit laid out uh, in front. So at first I start by assembling some shapes that I think I'm gonna like. At this point in time I don't even know what scale I'm building at. I'm just assembling shapes that uh, have some interest in relation to each other. I'm adding some wings you can see and here I'm adding a, a cockpit bridge type thing. You can see I'm already changing my mind here about the scale of the of this ship design and uh, I'm keeping them side by side for now just so I can uh, compare. Pretty quickly I'm, I'm coming to a conclusion that I like this wedge shape and uh, that I like the wing to be underneath the main fuselage. I'm playing with uh, different engine configurations just to check what shapes I find the most appealing and here I find the, uh, the one I like the best. I rotate it just to get a sense of how it performs under uh, in action um, and um, it gives me confidence that I, I, I like the, the designs I've come up with so far. Just testing, scale, tension. I decided I need a rear for the cockpit and uh, customize some elements to uh, make that possible in a quick and easy way. Here I'm playing with uh, the shapes that I built into the fuselage. There are some indents that uh, I feel could could speak to the idea of having some intakes there. So I positioned some um, droplet uh, shape intakes uh, in and around there. Here I'm playing with the notion of more uh, weaponry around the front maybe missile launch or some sort of sensor array. Placing cannons out front and again using the cavity that's built into the fuselage shape to um, indicate the sensor packs and such. And playing with different wing configurations. And I want to lead the eye to the leading edge of that uh, bottom wing there and I decide to place the missile system uh, down to, to that location. I decide to go for a Star Wars inspired aesthetic and uh, as such place an, an object behind the cockpit that feels familiar to that universe. assemble a few objects, uh, looking through the, the bank of assets and I begin to place them on the surface of the ship. Some canards. I'm a sucker for canards, I have to admit, uh, so I do that. And then some creepy parts. Here now we are getting into the detail, pipes and a little antenna and stuff again. And again, as before, using the shapes that's already built into the foundational geometry as a guide for how to place objects in and around. Need to cut out a hole for the cockpit. Again here I'm unsure the strength, the sensibility of the strength of the wing to the engine, so I'll come back to that a little bit later, but I'm definitely back and forth between having several wings or just having strengtheners there. 
there's something about it, the iconography of the of the shape of the ship, but just with the wing. At the same time, it adds a little bit of fragility to the design that I'm not loving. So I'm balancing out those two ideas. As you can see, I'm playing with in further engine configurations. And this will continue throughout the build. that have shapes that go well with this particular engine configuration. And I'm starting to place the creepy, bit, creepy bits in and around the surfacing of that particular shape. Moving onwards to the, to the rear of the craft. say moving onwards you can see how scatterbrained I am in this part of the process I allow myself to go wherever I want to wherever my eye <laughs> needs me if you will I allow myself to to play with the shapes uh, and to con con constantly explore and be on the lookout for, for things that, that need my attention in that sense I suppose you could say that the work procedure isn't particularly strict but quite playful um, I find that works well for me at least in the early stage. Here we come to the rear, as I was mentioning before. And the idea here is to add greebles and details to make uh, make it feel like it's a place where you can adjust uh, um, technology in the ship, you know, access ports, vents, all kinds of things. I'm using some nice copper materials as well to give it some visual interest and make it pop a little bit more than just it, for it to be a, a bland bank of uh, mechanical junk. And see, so I decided to clean up the shapes a little bit here, stretch the cockpit. I came back to it here after a few days and I see, look upon it with, uh, with fresh eyes. So I de chose that particular engine configuration, but Figured out I could figured I could use it as a as a subcomponent of the the two um, cones that I like quite a bit. Again, trying to explain uh, a way how they're connected, and and so this particular little square part with the vents got its own little piping into the main engine to explain its relationship. Again, furthering the the little missile part a little more. And again, as mentioned, back to the wing strengtheners mentioned before. I'm struggling a bit to get that credibility of strength that I want while retaining the iconography of the simplicity of that uh, super clean wing shape. I feel I need a little bit of visual weight to the rear compartment of the engine block and add some shapes there that I feel play well with the two cylindrical front shapes and some pipework and whatnot. As I feel the texturing on the particular uh, nose component is too noisy and it, it alludes to the scale being too big, I decide to re-texture, map the um, simple fuselage to make the ship appear not as large as it would with the old texturing. And again here I'm trying to align the selected, uh, the chosen um, polygons um, with the lines in the, in, the, in the texture so that it feels like panel gaps, natural panel gaps. That said, I'm not super precise about it. it uh, it'll be fine. I like the idea of adding some scoops to the scoops so that they can scoop. Um, Having this sense of aggressivity in the engine and makes it feel like it's uh, even more purposeful in, in, in its intake uh, purpose. The old color scheme of dark gray and yellow I wasn't loving particularly, so I decided to, uh, to go with a classic 
blue outline on engine parts and cockpits and, and such to give it sort of a classic Star Wars-esque look. See how it's textured it's a little humpty dumpty and i would say i've learned a few things about texturing lately and how to make effect effective trim sheets so next texture map i'm gonna make will definitely be more rational more effectively constructed to allow this work to be even easier i suppose the main reason for why it's easy is that i'm pretty sloppy about it Here you can see i'm accessing the big medium small um, catalog in my user uh, library and adding some of these cool characters that the, the guys have made. Thumbs up, Top Gun Day, and everything. I had a plane just to check silhouettes and outlines and how the light falls. And here's the sort of initial render. I decide to just make a studio background so I can place the camera in whichever angle I prefer. Here I'm using K-Cycles. It uh, makes lovely renders and uh, that could be a video for another day. That's it for now, so I uh, hope you enjoyed and see you soon. Thank you.